let's say, against homosexuality, because to know is to engage in sexual intercourse, and the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah were willing to tear the strangers out of Lot's house and use and abuse them as they see, saw fit. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video by Jordan Peterson titled Jordan Peterson on Sodom and Gomorrah. Wow. I believe this is going to be another interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot, remember Lot is Abraham's nephew, sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, my lords, I turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. Now oh, he's Abraham's nephew and kinsman, and acting in exactly the manner that Abraham does. He shows hospitality to these people. And they said, No, no, we'll stay in the street all night. And he insisted, he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. Well, that's the part of the story that's been used as a diatribe, let's say, against homosexuality, because to know is to engage in sexual intercourse, and the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah were willing to tear the strangers out of Lot's house and use and abuse them as they see, saw fit, right? And so what are they doing? Well, they're violating the, principle, the principles that govern appropriate conduct with the stranger. And maybe the stranger is something you shouldn't mess with because you don't know who you're messing with. So that's like warning number one. Well, and they're, so, and they're violating the essential principles of hospitality. And then there's the sexual thing here, I think, is, isn't... The sexual thing here is something more like the absolute danger of immediate gratification, sexual included, outside the constraints of any civilized structure whatsoever. Right, because that's as uncivilized behavior as you could possibly hope for, right? Strangers come into your city. They're in the house of someone who's part of your city. They're being shown hospitality. A mob shows up and says, fork them over, man. We're going to do whatever the hell we want to them, and it's not going to be good. And if you get in the way, things are going to go even worse for you. So... So that's what it seems to me to be. It's completely dysregulated behavior. It's behavior that's outside the, the confines of any civilized structure whatsoever. It's an, indic it's an indication that the, entire, the social structure of the ent entire society has collapsed so that there's nothing left for the inhabitants to do except to engage in the most brutal of immediate gratification and destruction. Well, so what does Lot do? I pray thee, brethren, do not do so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not yet known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and you do to them as is good in your eyes, only unto these men do nothing. And therefore, for therefore came they thee under the shadow of my roof. Well, it's hard to know what to make of that, you know. I mean, it doesn't exactly seem like the advisable thing for Lot to do. And, but I think at least what it is is an indication of the degree to which he took the solemn vow of hospitality seriously. And I think that's the idea that the story is trying to promote. And the angel said, stand back. Oh, and the men said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn to talk to us, and he will needs be a judge. <laughs> now we'll deal worse with him than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Maybe what Lot thought was something like, well, we're, we're done. Like, we're all done with this mob. And 
perhaps I can spare some of us. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men, this is the angels, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So they were so corrupt that they were blind and could not see now, even to find the door. And the men then said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, any family members, son-in-law, and thy sons and thy daughters, and whoever thou hast in this city, get them out of the place, for we will destroy this place, because of the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, you get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, lingered, the man laid hold upon his hands and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. So, He's still, this is an indication of the danger of not acting with appropriate haste when the time has come. I mean, Lot's already seen what happened. He saw that the men came to his door. He saw that they were murderous rapists. He saw that the angels took them out. And he's still hesitant to leave that place. And so I guess one of the things that this story requires people to ask themselves is, Are you in a place that's so bad that you should leave? Or when are you in a place that's so bad that you should leave? And if you are in a place that's so bad that you should leave, then the time to leave is now. Because there's no time to waste. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind you. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said to them, Oh, not not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed me into saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, there's a city near to flee unto, and it's a little one, which means maybe it's not big and corrupt like Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it, is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. Matthew Henry said, Lot lingered, he trifled. Thus many who are under convictions about their spiritual state and the necessity of a change defer that needful work. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee, the angel. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken, the small city. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be gone hither. Therefore the name of the city was Zor. That's where Lot went. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew the cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. No nostalgia for catastrophe. I think that's what that means is that when you leave what's not good, You wash the dust off your feet and you don't look back. And that's a very harsh lesson. Wow. What an interesting uh, video from Jordan Peterson on Sodom and Gomorrah. Wow. And I've really learned a lot just listening to Jordan uh, Peterson's explanation on the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, sometimes a lot of us will find ourselves uh, in a situation whereby we're always thinking, should we leave or should we remain in that, in, that, in that position in which we are? You know, sometimes we just have to make the decision to move on because, you know, you are somewhere and you are not getting any, uh, eh, 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 you are not getting any benefit. You are not seeing the reason why you are in that position and you feel you need to leave. But at the same time, you take that place in which you are as your comfort zone. 
you are afraid of what you will see if you go out there. So as a result of that, you tend to uh, not make an informed decision because you are afraid of the, the unseen. So I believe this video has shown us that at a point in our life, we have to make certain decisions to leave uh, the place in which we are to another different place. And you never can tell what might happen next. Something positive might happen along the way. And when we make a decision, we should always stand by that decision without wavering. And at the end of the day, we'll get a good result. We can all tell that Jordan Peterson made a vivid and a clear explanation on the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Believe me, I have learned a lot just listening to Jordan Peterson. I believe you also do. So keep the comments coming. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.